Consumption is the purchase of things to satisfy our needs and wants. Our enormously productive economy demands that we make consumption our way of life, that we convert the buying and use of goods into rituals. Our collective consumption has increased dramatically in recent decades. Based on current patterns, it's estimated we'll consume more in the next 40 years than since we first stood on two legs. Have we ever really stopped to consider whether all this stuff we buy is doing any good? We all love to buy cheap stuff, but stuff is cheap because not all costs have been included. Corporations like to socialise their environmental costs and push them over to us. That means we all pay those costs. Is this fair? Our Earth's resources are being chewed through faster than they can be replaced. A great inequality between the haves and have-nots has developed. Is it time we paused and recognised just what a comfortable life most of us have? Should we take less notice of people telling us that we need more stuff to be happy? If happiness is truly our goal, then more stuff is unlikely to be the answer. So starfish and angelfish, a few weeks ago we went on a walk around our local area and we were looking at the things that we have in our community here, our natural environments and our built environments. So today we're going to look at another community um, around the world and it's a community that I visited uh, last year in Soweto. Anytime that you sit down and tell them a story, especially if it's related to you, um, it always engages them and relates them to the, it relates back to them. There's actually something missing from these photos, electricity poles. If you have a look, they don't have electricity that runs through their home. So they live very differently to how our community here actually live and consume. So are there any, is there any thinking about that? What does everyone think about that? This consumption lesson you've team taught here today, can you tell us how you went about planning this lesson? And we knew that uh, the kind of thing that we wanted to do because of uh, what Diana had talked about with her photos and we yeah. saw that there was some information on consumption so that we, we thought that might be a good focus for the lesson. Miss Mackenzie, I've just put up another photo of some children that I spotted in this community. As you can see, they've just found a tyre that's been abandoned somewhere and, and that's what they've turned into uh, their toy. Um, put your hand up if sometimes you have too many toys in your hands. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Hands down. It's really important that going into the future we want to help students become responsible citizens who want to conserve the environment and, and who are aware of their consumption. What do you notice about how these people in this photo travel around and how it compares with us? We have cars and buses and trams and trains and that kind of stuff. And they will probably make their own little carts and then they'll move along by that. So if you had a photo of where you live and this photo sitting next to each other, what differences would you see? Well, they're sitting on the floor, we would be in our houses. They wouldn't have iPads or DSs or, or computers. TVs. What would happen if everyone lived like us in Australia and used all the resources we use? There wouldn't be much green left. I think that we use more resources. It, because with us we have all the roads and the houses and the paths and all that stuff but they have the dirt and the trees and not much, not much big houses. Who can remember making these graphs up here that we've got on our wall? We figured out that in the past we, um, there wasn't much electricity and technology. Well, when we first came up with the idea, we thought we'd jump onto the Cool Australia website and we found a great worksheet, which was super easy to use as well, that allowed the students to go home and, and do a survey and have a look at uh, the appliances they have in their home today and then have a conversation with their parents or grandparents about the same appliances in their homes when they were at the same age and get the children to recognise how it's changed over time. So today, we're very lucky that we've got some grandparents here today. We've got um, Maddie's grandmother Betty and Lucas's grandmother Jan. So when we were talking about the electrical appliances, not only didn't we um, have the money to buy a lot of uh, goods, but they weren't even there. They, they hadn't invented. even been invented, that's no. right. I remember our very first refrigerator, but up until then we'd use what was called an ice box. 
Well, I guess what we're trying to do here is for the kids to recognise where we are at at this point um, in society and where we need to be in the future and um, pretty much so that it's instilled within them. I found that their their life would have been harder and a bit more boring. Mm. Why do you say boring, Liv? Because they wouldn't have that much toys. No, we used our imaginations. We played games and we made up things and we pretended to be different people. And instead of going and watching TV and Peppa Pig, we were the Peppa Pigs. We were the ones who um, became the stars of our own imagination. It's a great way to engage the kids and they were very engaged in the conversation and and we actually had to pull them back a little bit to stop them from... uh, talking and, and asking their questions because once they got started. They used a lot of imagination and um, they got to play in roads and um, stuff because not many people had cars. Do you think we have more impact on the environment or less? More. And why is that? Because um, the material and everything they used to create them actually really affects the environment, like the factories. It incorporates so many things. So obviously collecting data and, and producing graphs is an important part of the maths curriculum, but being able to integrate that with our unit of inquiry um, was so much more engaging for the kids and made it so much more relative, uh, relevant as opposed yeah. to just uh, you know, making a graph of... Yeah, exactly. Here's a book that I take camping. It's got all the birds I've actually seen. Like this one here, I've seen a few rainbow lorikeets and things. I love being out in the open. Um, Some of the times we might go rock climbing and abseiling and we have just so much fun. Then come back and we like to sit around the campfire and toast some marshmallows. It's really good and I... When I come home, I, I, look at the, I look at the TV and just go, I'd rather be camping. T-R-O-P-I-C-A-L. Black current. And then there's black current. So what you do is you open it and it would have like a fact. So this one says if we have nude food, we have a better life. I have made this poster with rubbish around it that we have found around our school. We are putting this poster around our school to inform all the kids in our school about what is happening around the world. I like rosemary for my cooking. Red capsicum and it's really yummy in my pasta. In the morning we come early because mum works in the canteen. So I water the plants. And I also pick out all the rubbish because I wanted to improve on the veggie gardens so we can cook with them in our canteen. When it's night time and I sit under the stars, I look up and feel peaceful and I make little pictures in the stars and I feel like there's a bigger world out there. Consumption has been described as buying stuff we don't need to impress people we don't like. When we finally stop and pause to have a look around, what do we see? Considered and thoughtful planning for a future where we can live within our means or a throwaway society where short-term self-interest rules? Will we continue to destroy or can we learn to change? The choice is ours.